Hi, Captain Steve from BoatTest.com, and today I'm on Helmsman Trawlers 43E. Now, this is a coastal cruiser designed for a cruising couple that may have some guests on board as well. Join me as I do a full features inspection. Let's start right here in the salon. Big picture first, U-shaped settee surrounding a solid wood table on a high-low pedestal. Expandable. We can drop this table down and convert this area into a berth, and if we were to do that, we could have a divider going across this whole area, making this sort of into a private suite because along with the berth area, we've got plenty of storage and a head just forward, making it into a private ensuite. Now, glass everywhere. We've got excellent visibility and natural light coming in, and all of these windows are opening. The Helmsman trawlers will provide a lot of customization capabilities, and this is a prime example of exactly how far they're willing to go. Take a look at this galley. It runs full length to the starboard side. Plenty of open counter space, storage underneath, convection microwave, induction cooktop. I'd like to see an extraction fan up on top, but that's not really necessary because we've got opening windows. Covered sink has cutting board underneath, stainless steel single basin sink, Dual basin is also optional. Up above, there are clever storage solutions. Take a look at this. Nice job there. And then right over here, we have an option to add a 36 inch color TV. Now the standard layout will have a galley just in this section here. Counter will come out and then in this position, we would have storage cabinets, a couple of individual seats that make opposing seating for the settee across the way. Now let's drill down a little bit and get into the impeccable fit and finish that's exhibited throughout this yacht. I mean, the workmanship is just incredible. First of all, teak everywhere we look, which gives the yacht a nice yachty quality to it. There's teak veneer on the bulkheads, but solid wood trimming all around. And all of the windows are trimmed. Of course, they're all opening. Beautiful workmanship. I mean, look at this table and the nice inlay work. They just did such a nice job on this. First thing I noticed as I came aboard was this piece right here, the teak with the holly inlay. And look how it comes across here. It creates this brace that's even got beautiful trim work right here. All intricate detailing. Here's another beveled edge. They just did such nice work throughout this yacht. The teak trim pieces on the overhead panels that are upholstered and these are all easily removable so we can get to the wiring and channels up above. All of the counters are Caesar stone which gives you a lot of choices for color. They're all fiddled, impeccable joinery, rounded edges, rounded edges, nothing sharp, beautiful workmanship on the banister and then coming down look at this teak and holly decking. Look at how the grains are matching all the way down. Just attention to detail all throughout this boat. And we're just scratching the surface here. In addition to this level of fit and finish, storage is an ongoing theme. It's just everywhere we look. Down, up, below, over, everywhere. Now, as we make our way to the flybridge, we go out the side doors from the raised pilot house. But the point being, most times we see a raised pilot house, it's elevated three, four, five steps because they put accommodations underneath. Here we've just got an engine room underneath. We don't need standing headroom there, so just two simple steps. Now as far as this race pilot house is concerned, we cover it in the performance video, so be sure to look for it. Let's check out the flying bridge. Well, features here start with a wide open boat deck, 12-3 by 9-6. Rails come up 26 inches and they dip down in the stern again for a tender. But with a tender gone, we can have a nice open space for putting in lounge chairs. Coming forward, the normal layout has the helm center mounted with two L-shaped seats on either side. Here, this owner requested that the helm be moved to the starboard side and now we've got a U-shaped dinette wrapping around a fiberglass pedestal table. Nice padding around the rails. Forward of the flying bridge, we've got an open coach roof with rails to both sides. We can use this for storing kayaks, stand-up paddleboard racks. Alternatively, we can have two 225 watt solar panels to each side and another one across the front. And notice that this is all channeled to keep water aft instead of dripping down onto the doors on the sides. 
The aft deck, five feet seven inches by 12 feet nine inches and protected by the extended overhead on top, seven feet two inches off the deck. A lot of options for what we can do here. Get a little entertainment center, refreshment center, ice maker, refrigerator, sink. The options are just everywhere. Right now we have a little flip up table to the starboard side. Access points, there are gates to both port and starboard. Standard is a single gate leading out to the swim platform, but in this case, the owner requested double gates. And I have to say, I kind of like the idea. Moreover, look at how solid this door is and the hardware, it's just beefy. Both doors easily latch into position. And now with both doors open, we have an opening four feet, two inches. And that leads us out to this swim platform that's got staple rails along the trailing edge that are easily removable. So we can bring a dinghy up here if we'd like. Otherwise, it's a great place to enter and exit the water from. Notice how we can also open up this aft window and screen and easily access this little serving area. Notice how the deck doesn't go all the way to the bulwarks. There's a channel going all the way around the deck that leads out through scuppers. So great feature for washing down this deck. Now let's take a look at the accommodations accessed through a center companionway. And already remember the theme we had of storage? Here's another nice compartment. No wasted space. Look at this nice grab rail. Well, the master is fully forward, seven feet of headroom. That leaves four feet, four inches over the berth, which measures 78 by 56. Now, more customization features. The owner of this boat wanted the berth to be a little bit lower, so it actually measures 34 inches off the deck. There's still access to both sides, one, two, three steps, storage to both sides, more storage behind that. More importantly, by lowering this, all that this owner gave up was one drawer underneath the berth and maybe a little more storage as we lift the berth up. More storage is just behind to both sides and these are cedar lined. Now we also have a lot of natural light, opening port lights to both port and starboard and then an overhead hatch that we can have a bug screen or a blackout screen adding to our privacy. Now the head is just outside, but let's not forget the fact that we have this accessed from a sliding door so we don't have anything swinging in or out in the way of all of the roominess we have. Sliding doors is a great touch, plus curved tops to the wood, just an impeccable fit and finish throughout this yacht. Now the head, just to the starboard side, electric flush toilet, sink recessed into the countertop, there's a grab rail, storage above behind a mirrored cabinet, more storage above the toilet. The shower has a teak seat and teak decking, opening port light for ventilation and a glass door. Now, just to the port hand side is the guest stateroom. Now the guest stateroom has headroom of six feet, 11 inches, five one above the berth in this position, one foot, nine inch, just under this position. The berth itself measures 56 inches by 76 inches, storage and hanging locker just forward, full length mirror in front of that and notice it's trimmed in teak storage drawers and then look at this nice storage shelf just above and notice again the sliding door it's just so nice to see rather than a swinging door excellent craftsmanship look at the curved wood to the top just great features everywhere throughout this boat now as impressed as i am with this boat every boat has its compromises and on this one I could probably think of two. First of all, boats in this size range generally focus on putting as many staterooms as they possibly can into the boat. Here, the focus seems to be on just making two staterooms and using the rest of the usable space for your daytime activities. I mean, let's face it, all you're gonna be doing in the staterooms is sleeping, so why not have a focus more on the open space in the daytime features? The second drawback, I think, if I had to use that term, would be these boats are made one at a time. They're not production boats. One at a time, each one is different. And for that reason, there are just not enough of them. And that's my full features inspection of the 43E from Helmsman Trawlers. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.